Well, a very pleasant good morning. Another sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Seems like these mornings do roll around rather quickly, but uh, I always relish the uh, privilege of being on YouTube and Facebook to share just a few minutes with those of my friends that uh, care to drop in on us. I was thinking earlier today, I've got about 550 friends. That's not many compared to some of you, but uh, I've got about 550, and I seriously doubt that 2% of them really tune in, but that's okay. It kind of goes along with what I want to talk about today, really, on our few minutes here with you. I know we preachers sometimes are guilty of, as we approach the Lord's Day, we, we pray, Lord, put it upon the hearts of people to be in the house of God today. And there's nothing wrong with that prayer. People need to be in church, and sometimes God needs to move upon them to get them there. So I do often pray, Lord, do put it upon the hearts of people to be in the house of God at the appointed time, and I want them to be there. But I wonder sometimes if it isn't more for me than it is anything else, because we preachers, we're always wanting to uh, be a blessing to many. And I know the more people that are in church on Sunday morning, greater potential of being a blessing to many. And I do pray that God will use me, that God will bless me, that I may bless others. And I do hope that the majority of those that sit in the pews of the church uh, where I preach uh, will be blessed. And I believe God wants to make us a blessing. And indeed, if I can be egotistical enough to say I believe that God does make us a blessing to many. Oftentimes, our listeners express that they were blessed by our ministry. So, you know, I'm thankful that uh, we have people that we can be a blessing to. And I know that sometimes our ambition is to, you know, just really get a big church so we can be a blessing to even more people. And I think of the times that Christ, throughout his earthly ministry, even though many were the times that the multitudes were pressing round about him and many were the times that he must have been gratified by those that were following him to hear his teaching. Yet I think of the many, many times that he associated with just one at a time. And oftentimes I pray at the beginning of the day, Lord, make me a blessing to someone today. And uh, I do believe that we each one ought to strive to be a blessing to someone we don't always have to be a blessing to a multitude. Christ was not always a blessing to a multitude. He was a blessing to one on many occasions. Think of the woman at Samaritan's well. He knew that she would be there. He knew that she would be there alone. And uh, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And the reason that he must needs go through Samaria was to have a one-on-one -on -one contact with this lady and to be a blessing to her. Remember the time that he was walking down through the streets of Jericho and, and he stopped under a sycamore tree. He knew that a little short man had climbed up into that sycamore tree because he had heard that Jesus was going to pass by and he wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. He had heard about all of his miracles and all the great things that he was doing and he wanted to see Jesus for himself. Well, Christ knew right where that one tax collector was. He stopped under that sycamore tree and he invited Zacchaeus to come down and invited himself to dinner with Zacchaeus. He wanted to be a blessing to one that day. I think about other incidents, you know, the crazed man in the cemetery. Uh, I don't think that the great multitudes witnessed uh, Jesus going into that cemetery and that man that they called Legion because he was possessed with so many devils. It was a one-to-one -one contact that Christ had with them that proved to be the greatest blessing that Legion had ever discovered in all of his life. Fact is, one of Christ's greatest miracles, and that was raising someone to life after they'd been in the grave for three days, was just in the home of his friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And I don't think that there was a lot of fanfare Christ made his way after learning of Lazarus' sickness and death. He made his way to their home, and it was there in just a small setting that he was a blessing to someone. So I'm thinking I don't have to be in the pulpit on Sunday to be a blessing uh, to people. Uh, you don't have to meet up with the multitude. You don't have to 
be able to attract a large following to be a blessing to someone. My prayer is make me a blessing to someone today. And you know, if just one person is blessed by Sunrise with Pastor Hayton, I'm gratified. If there's just one person that listens to any message that I should post on Facebook, well, I'm gratified for that one person that got some help out of it. Oftentimes throughout the day, things come to my mind that I share. And if just one person is blessed by what I'm able to share, then I am blessed. So, you know, we don't have to have the multitudes to be a blessing. Christ often was a blessing to individuals. And I pray God will make us a blessing to those that we come in contact with today. Well, let's pray and ask God's blessing upon us again and pray for those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that need a special touch from God. Heavenly Father, Thou art a great God. We thank Thee we have the privilege of bound our hearts in Your presence another time. Pray Your blessing upon another day of life. Make us a blessing to someone today. Pray, Lord, You'll reach out to those that are hurting, those, Lord, that are carrying heavy burdens, those that are going through times of affliction, or adversity, be faithful to them, we pray. Now again, Lord, bless each one of us as we serve you, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I've enjoyed being with you again this morning. Tell your friends about Sunrise with Pastor Hayton, and maybe I'll be a blessing to more than one someday. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.